Hey, how's it going guys? So without talking about the fact it's been two years since my last tutorial, uh, let's just get straight into it for the newcomers. So the first step towards data moshing is simple. Download Avide Nukes. I'll provide this link in the description. All you have to do is open it and it will automatically download the file. Keep it. It's probably a virus, let's be honest. Go through the installation like anyone normal. Now it's finished. Open it now if you want. If you're ballsy like me. And it'll open. Cool. We've installed it. Alright, so now for the video you want to data mosh. It could be anything. Literally anything. Simply uh, get it on YouTube. Add PP to the URL. This is a simple trick, guys, to easily pirate the videos. Okay, so now you have your video you want to data mosh. Drag it into the timeline. This prompt will sometimes come up. You can press yes if you want to set your project settings to the actual video dimensions and frames per second. In this case, I do want to do that. Now we're going to go to render. A lot of different data mushing tutorials tell you to render in the worst quality, and then others say to do some specific format. I'm just going to put my opinion out there. You can do whatever format you want. So you can go to the highest quality. So this is how it works. Lower quality, better data mosh. Just in my own experience anyway. For this case, we'll go to Video for Windows and select NTSC DV Widescreen. You don't have to play with any template settings, we'll just save it the way it is. Name it something, Drunk Guy, render it. Alright, so now we've rendered it, open up Evite Mux, and there's two ways of importing the video. You can select the icon here, press open and find the directory, select it like normal, press open. Or you can go to your desktop and simply drag it in. All right, so now you have it loaded. Go to the video drop-down list and select MPEG for ASP and in brackets XVID. If you do not have this video codec, there will be a link in the description that should provide your system with it. If it doesn't, please let me know. All right, click it and press configure. Go to the frame tab and for maximum iframe interval, Set it to the highest number you can put inside of this text box. Now for maximum consecutive B frame, set it to zero. Press OK and now press save. Name it whatever you want. And at the very end, the file extension should be .avi. Save it. Once it's done encoding, press OK and open that file you've just encoded. Now select video, the drop down menu and press copy. Now here's where the fun begins. This is all about playing around, data moshing, there's no specific way to do it. There are basic steps, but you can play around. So the basic steps, find a spot in the video with a lot of movement. More movement equals better data moshing. That's just how it works. So as you see here, pretty good movement. Once you have the frame you want to start the data mosh on, select the A. Then go forward one frame using these timeline controls and then select B. This will select that little area. Now you can press control C to copy and then paste it a bunch. Depending on how long you want your darts mush to last, that's how many times you should press control V. All right, don't paste too fast. Don't hold down control V or avut muxi will crash. Okay, it will crash. It's like Sony Vegas. It's just unreliable. Now, as I was saying before, you can play around with the data mosh. That means you can copy more than one frame at a time and it'll create a really funny stutter. So let's get a frame we want. Press A to select the start of the frames. Go forward two times and select B. Now copy and paste that with the same process. So now there'll be a jitter. If we go back and press play, Now here's where it all comes together. Press save once you're done fiddling with the timeline. Save it under anything you want. Dot AVI. Press save and press no. So now your file has been encoded, rendered, whatever you want to call it. Open it and it should look like this. Not the best example, but it works. And it's all about the movement in the video, the quality of the video, and however crazy you want it to be. Data moshing is very unpredictable, but the more you play around with it, the more you can kind of get a grip 
on how it works. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial after these two years, and I'm probably going to be making a few more. So <laughs> leave a comment to let me know what you want in the future, and I'll see you then.